you for listening to politicalstorm.com. I'm John Small. Hey, baby, how are you doing? I am fantastic. How are you? Good. I've got my wife, Heidi, joining me right now because we're going to talk about all things presidential. A lot of different things to talk about. Uh, Before we get to the current election, i got to share this. If you want to send President Obama a Facebook message, now you can. The White House, about a week ago, unveiled a Facebook Messenger bot that allows users to send a note to the president online. Yeah, and I'm sure that's... But that's what he's doing, sitting around reading. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think we, we need our president messing around on Facebook? <laughs> I I, like I said, I don't think he is. I think I he's got people that are doing that. I, yeah, I think so, too. Uh, another quick story here. Long before he declared himself as a candidate for the presidency, Donald Trump reportedly discussed with an NBC executive the possibility of continuing The Apprentice from the White House if he were elected. He hadn't announced yet that he was running, but he said, you know, I'm considering running. If I uh, end up becoming the president, what would you guys think of doing the, uh, the, you know, the show from... I think he was kidding. I don't know. He was just joking. What There's no think way. Do you think that'd be cool? Or you think no, I don't like, think that would be cool. The White House is a place yeah. of prestige, and it should always be treated that way. I remember back when I was a kid, it was, and, and I'd be nice if we had that if again. If we could someday. have it again, it would be, be super... Really yeah, a politician in Norway. Uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna get back to the current election. I've got all these little stories that I haven't had a chance to get to, so I'm gonna get to them. A politician in Norway. Her name is uh, Trine Sky Grande. I'm sure I got that exactly right. Was caught playing Pokemon Go during a foreign affairs and defense meeting. Oh my gosh! She would ask a question and then turn back to her game. So <laughs> she was pretending like she was paying attention. You do that to me here all the time. <laughs> I'll be chatting with you on our radio program, and then you'll just say, yeah, yeah. What I'm we like, do here is not exactly a matter of national security. <laughs> well, it kind of is. No. I mean, could be. So anyway, that happened in Norway. Uh, so at least we're not the only wow. ones that have messed up political that is, systems. That is so wrong. Now let's head a little closer to home. We live in South Dakota, and this just happened in Minnesota. In a vote, a nine-year-old won his third consecutive term as mayor of Camarant, Minnesota. He must be doing a good job. Well, uh, I tried to reach out for comment, and here's what Duke said. Woof, woof. The nine-year-old is a dog. Yeah. A nine-year-old dog named Duke won his third consecutive term as mayor. Again, this is in Coromont, Minnesota. I bet you looked into it. It's probably two houses and 50 miles to the nearest gas station. I haven't looked into it. I just think it's cool. C-O-R-M-O-R-A-N-T if you want to Google it or anything. So that that's what happens in, in uh, Minnesota is where that happens. So, And then the final story that I have to get to over here before we get to you know the business at hand. A naked Donald Trump could be yours if you're interested in that kind of thing. One of the life-size naked Trump statues that Artist Collective In Decline installed in the country in early August will be sold at an upcoming auction the statue is expected to fetch how much, Heidi? How much do you think? I really don't know. It's it's just wrong. They think that it's going to fetch about $10,000 hmm. at a sale on October 22nd. Now, first of all, who would even want that? Yeah, where would you, what would you do with it? I don't know. I saw the even statue. Even if you're against him, yeah. would you want to put something like that like in your yard? Would you spend ten grand? for No. It? I mean, what would you do with it once you got it? It's Vicente ridiculous. Vicente Fox might buy it. I noticed, I was watching the coverage of all that happened yesterday. Vicente Fox was not a fan of this, anything that happened yesterday. Not a fan. He's the former president of Mexico. We'll get to that story in a bit. Again, this statue is expected to fetch ten grand at an auction slated for October the 22nd. Interesting time frame for that, right before the election. A portion of the auction proceeds will benefit the National Immigration Forum. The statue for sale originally appeared on Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. Similar Trump statues popped up in San Francisco and Seattle, in Cleveland, and in New York. At the risk of reiterating what many other people have said, if somebody had done a statue like this about Hillary Clinton, a naked statue with her varicose veins and her bulging belly and, you know, without her giant hospital coat that she wears over her body all the time, (laughs) if somebody did a statue exposing all of her flaws... It, people would have lost their freaking minds. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it's okay uh, for somebody to do something like that to it's, him. It's art, Heidi. No, well, art. then it would be hard if, art if he did it for her as yeah. well. Well, I'm working on one right now. I'm just let's away. do one. I'm going to get my statue ready, and then I'm going to sell it at an auction, and we're going to be billionaires. There you go. No, we probably won't. 
Okay, moving right along to the real business at hand. Um, Hillary Clinton is in hiding right now. Uh, she was absent from every press conference that's mm-hmm. happened for the last over, I think it's over 300 days yeah, now. Yeah, that's like what right you want. To. That's what you want from a leader. So uh, she was invited to go to Mexico. And, Didn't go. M- and meet with the current president of Mexico. And they declined. Uh, then Donald Trump was invited to go to Mexico, and he decided to go. And I have to tell you, he looked very presidential standing at the podium mm-hmm. next to a world leader. And there were people asking about the wall, and he said, we haven't really discussed the wall, but yeah, yeah, we're, you know, I don't remember exactly what the quote was, but he, they asked him about it. And, and he said, you know, we haven't really talked about that. But when he got back home to uh, Arizona, he did his immigration speech, and he said, you know, by the way, we, we're still building a wall. And they're still paying for it. And there are people that are losing their mind over that because they're saying he keeps flip-flopping on it. He didn't flip-flop. He did not go to Mexico and say, no, we're not going to build the wall. Yeah, I guess we are going to build the wall. Maybe we're going to build the wall. No, what he said there was that their president and he had not talked about it yet. We haven't talked about it. And that's true. Here's the way it works in negotiations. For those of you who've never negotiated before, uh, first of all, uh, you, you need to be in a position to negotiate. He right, has and not he is not in that yet. position yet, so he cannot have that discussion. So it's not really like you can sit down and you know go right. through and chisel everything out. Now, by the way, Hillary Clinton voted for the wall yeah. before she voted against it. You yeah. know, she hasn't ever voted against it, other than she's saying she's Other not than for now, it now, she's saying she doesn't want it. But she voted for it when she had the opportunity to vote against she voted it, for it, and she but voted she for it. She calls it a fence. Why well, vote for a Even wall. still, whatever. That's I fine. I'd fence. be perfectly fine with an electric fence. Yeah. Was it an electric fence? No, but that's what it should have been. <laughs> Is it a picket fence? <laughs> With a little gate every 15 little feet? Little potted flowers. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> Don't know what kind Maybe of Maybe that's what she thought they were I talking that about. Was. <laughs> we put a picket fence across the border. Oh, you you mean it was like a keep out fence? Yes. It wasn't a yeah. welcome to the neighborhood, look at our picket fence. I fence. think an electric fence would be a fantastic no, idea. I don't think that's a good idea. But I will tell you, I think it's, it's really funny. Uh, about maybe three weeks ago, I was exposed for the first time ever to MSNBC. I never really watched that before. So I flipped over there and watched the, the lady that's on in the evening. The I couldn't Rachel tell you. I don't Manow. watch it. Uh, Rachel Maddow, and I, I heard somebody called her Rachel Mad Cow, which I thought was really kind of funny. And then when I flipped over and watched it, I can see why they would say that. She seems very angry. She mm. doesn't seem too happy. I have no clue who she is. No. Well, for those of you who, who've ever watched her, she doesn't seem to be a happy person. And uh, what was interesting, since then, I flipped over in the mornings now, and I watched uh, Morning Joe, is what they call it. I don't know if the dude that's on there is named Joe. I don't know. Haven't really cared enough to check into why they call it that, but uh, there's a dude that's on there, and there's a lady that's on there, uh, extremely liberal. And it's funny because this morning they reminded us that they are journalists. Yeah, they're journalists. Right, sure you are. Because they were on this rant against Trump, and they said, you know, we're journalists. We're journalists, so, you know, we're trying to keep... And it was it was funny because Way to go. To Way we, to stay neutral. We are neutral. journalists. <laughs> like, oh, are you really? Speaking of journalists, did you see that they had a guy on... I don't remember which liberal news channel it was that saved a baby from a from a vehicle hmm. that was wearing a Trump shirt and they they, they blurred out blurred the out the Trump during serious? their interview with him. Yeah. Did not see that. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um speaking of Trump supporters, there was a gentleman who uh, is a black man, a reverend, who shared a photo that supposedly was Hillary Clinton in blackface and this was like two, three days ago. And the world went nuts. I've seen nuts. that picture. The world went nuts about it because, oh, this Trump supporter did uh-huh. this. This Trump surrogate did this. So they're trying to make it seem like Trump did it. He didn't do anything. He, he didn't do anything. You know, he and he but was. But I saw to, that picture like a, over a year ago. And the guy apologized, you know. And, and by the way, he is a black man. So it's not like he was trying to make fun of black people. He is a black man. Meanwhile, Anthony Weiner who's a Hillary Clinton surrogate, <laughs> and look what he's doing. Oh, yeah. And it's funny how that same media is not going after that surrogate as much as they've gone after the one. So it's been a while since doing, we've had a chance to chat, Doing stuff it? like that with his child mm. right in bed next to him. Isn't that nuts? disgusting? Uh, uh, well, I guess it's not nuts. It's wiener. But, but it's <laughs> close. So uh. close to nuts. Uh, I think that's just crazy. Uh, but the guy in, in his wife works for Hillary Clinton. She's one that uh, worked for the Clinton Foundation and worked for 
the state at the same time was get you know the one oh, of the, yeah. one of the problems where they have all this stuff that's all tangled up. So uh, we reached out to Hillary Clinton to visit with her about the Clinton Foundation scandal, and here was her response. Yeah, none. Uh, no press conference. We reached out to Hillary Clinton to ask her about the email scandal, and here was her response. Oh, that's right. There was no response. And we reached out to her to talk to her about why she's been in hiding and has not gone to Mexico when she was invited. And, and her, here was her response. You may have noticed there's a pattern. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have much to say. That's not what you want for a leader. Uh, that's not that's at all what scary, you want for a leader. Honestly. I was watching, again, one of the channels. Uh, you need the person to run the free world to be a person that will go head on into danger and, and be willing to stand up for what they believe in and for what they've done and for what they've stood for in the past. And if they cannot do that, that is not somebody you want representing us going forward. You know, here, here's the thing that's interesting. I was watching. I flipped back and forth from CNN to Fox News to Headline News to uh, MSNBC. So those four channels. <laughs> My wife over here, it drives her crazy to watch TV with me lately. And I found out we have picture in picture. I'm like, oh, I love it. And she's over there going, oh, why do we have to have that? But I can flip back and forth even quicker now. And it is so amazing to watch the same story being told from such completely different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I understand that Fox News leans to the right. But the others all lean so far. But to not the left. as blatantly. I mean, I feel like Fox at least gives the other side the opportunity. They do. And they don't cut them off. Exactly. The other stations, they oh, yeah. pretend to give the other side the opportunity, but then they don't let them speak at all. So, so they've got somebody just sitting there, just their token Republican. So let me explain. I'll show you how this all works. Because on Fox News, they'll ask a question, they'll give you the chance to, to speak, and then somebody else will. But on uh, especially MSNBC, that one is the worst. They are so far to the right, it, it, or so far to the left, rather. It's just crazy. Um, so I'll ask Heidi a question. Uh, so what do you think of Donald Trump? Oh, I really no, no, think no, that no. I, I'm going to cut you off right now because I gave you way too much time to answer that. And I'm going to try to come up with something anti-Trump because you're on MSNBC. You're on my turf. It's mm -hmm. nuts. If you've not watched that channel, and if you're looking for a good laugh, check it out. <laughs> It doesn't make me laugh because if you're looking for news, their jobs the are to report facts. Yeah, they reminded us this morning that they are journalists. And to just let people know, this is what's happening. Make up your own mind. Here's the facts. We will not insert any opinions. And that goes for all of them across the board. Exactly. That's exactly the way that it should be. Now, the good news is we are not journalists. No, we're we are not. not even qualified to be radio announcers. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Somebody, somebody let us in this studio. <laughs> we're run, we've run amok. That's what's going on here. Uh, but the good news is we are who we are, and we're not trying to pretend to be something that we're not, and we're not trying to tell you that we're something that we're not. I but, just like to voice my opinions. Yeah, and here's the good news. You get the chance to voice your opinion, too, at politicalstorm.com. Uh, we're doing a podcast here just like you can. Yep. You want to have a... And you can post it on here as yeah, well. You want to have an equal and an opposite opinion? Uh, go online and do a podcast. Do it every day. We committed to do this every day. We've missed a few because it's been busy. But I'm really glad to have Heidi back in here. It's a lot easier doing this with you sitting there, by the way. Why, thank you. We do a radio show together every day. So it's really fun to have you here doing this because she is far more political than I am. I'm and glad you like doing it with me rather than all alone. Something missing when I'm doing it all by myself. Yeah. Yeah. She's not the same. Not the same. <laughs> hey, if you'd like the platform to have your opinion be heard, go to politicalstorm.com. On the top right corner, there's a place where you can log in and and start a free account. You can blog if you want to do that. If you want to do a podcast like this, do a podcast. If you want to do however you want to do it. You want to do videos. There are people who do videos. But let your voice be heard. And then it's fun to go check out the comments, too, and see what people think of your opinion. Because I've got some fans, and I've got some not-so-fans. <laughs> see, I don't read the comments because I really don't care what people think of me. <laughs> there you go. I'm I sure should. I've got some not-so-fans. but Maybe I should do that. I really don't care. That it, My opinion is my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, just don't listen. Oh, I'm sorry, listen. you're wrong. Uh, I'm an MSNBC, you don't get an opinion. You get to start talking and they'll cut you off no matter but what. But I don't read them. So if, if anybody's going to leave bad comments about me if, thinking you're going to hurt my feelings, yeah. I'm not going to see it. So I so, hate to burst your bubble. Well, if you, if you are leaning to the right and you're on MSNBC, they will cut you off. <laughs> the good news is there are other channels that they'll just cut you, period. So that, that's not so bad. All right, time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to politicalstorm.com. I'm John Small.